Now, this is another problem uh, that involves face change. And this problem might look uh, intimidating, but actually it's very easy once you get to understand the concept. So the problem reads, uh, you have a 6 kilogram piece of solid copper metal. Now, in our illustration, I use the pink one to represent solid copper. It is at an initial temperature T, which we don't know what that is, is placed with 2 kilograms of ice that is initially at 20 or negative 20.0 degrees Celsius. So this is its initial configuration or initial state. You have your copper here at some temperature T and your ice over there. So overall, the ice I just represented with three cubes, but overall, the mass of that is 2 kilograms and initially at negative 20. The ice is in an isolated container of negligible mass and no heat is exchanged with the surrounding. So no heat or energy is allowed to go in as well as no energy is allowed to go out of that. So think of it as a perfect insulator. After thermal equilibrium, that means to say your ice now, uh, sorry, your ice and your copper as well as the water <clears throat> has the same temperature. There is now 120 kilogram of ice. So from 2 kilograms, you now have 1.20 kilogram of ice. And the remaining 0.80 is now in its liquid form. So you notice now you have some phase change involved now for the 0.80, only for the 0.80 kilogram of ice. So the question is, what was the initial temperature of the piece of copper? Now, obviously, uh, the piece of copper, which is initially, according to the problem, let's write what we knew about the problem. So we knew that um, initially, the T initial of the copper is at, say, temperature T. And that must be greater than the temperature of the ice because you notice, class, that this one, the heat coming from copper is actually being, or it's being lost by the copper, over here, it's being lost by the copper or heat goes out of the copper and is absorbed by your ice. Because there is a phase change involved. So basically, when you have from solid phase and you need that to uh, transform its phase to, say, liquid phase, we know that that happens at the expense of the addition of heat, not necessarily um, change in temperature, but simply the addition of heat. And since in the problem, your initially here, your initial mass of ice is at 2 kilograms, what happens actually in the final phase is uh, the ice now is only uh, 1.20 kilogram, and you have now water, which is at 0.80 kilograms. So the point that I'm trying to make is that this Ti the initial temperature of your copper must be very high compared to the ice such that this temperature, this, which is related to the quantity of heat uh, by the copper, allows for the ice to be melted because it gains those energy. So um, another thing that you have to note about this class to understand very clearly is that initially you have your ice, and it is at negative 22, sorry, negative 20, negative 20.0 degrees Celsius. Now, this ice has to be converted first to the same mass of ice at uh, 0 degrees Celsius. So, at this point, you're going to add heat. So, the, the copper is losing heat, but it's actually being gained by the ice to change its temperature from negative 20 to 0 degrees Celsius. But take note that the phase that they are in, uh, this is still uh, in solid phase. It's just that it's uh, at a lower temperature. This one also is still at a solid phase, but at a higher temperature. It, it's now at 0 degrees. Now take note also, class, that part of this, diba, this is initially 2 kilograms. So this is also at this point 2 kilograms. So the 2 kilogram ice, which is now at 0 degrees Celsius, part of that will be converted to water. You now have the mass of some water at 0 degrees Celsius. 
So at this point now, this also needs an input of heat, which we call the latent heat. There is no notice, there is no change in temperature. You still have zero degrees to zero degrees, but you now have change in phase. This is now in liquid form. So since there is a change in phase, you have some latent heat or latent heat added to the system. But also note class, because it will be very relevant in the problem solving, that out of the 2 kilograms, I is only 0 0.80 is actually converted to water. And that, the understanding of this one will change or will, will dictate how you will be able to solve the problem. So the same with everything that I have discussed. We always remember that in calorimetry, the quantity of heat that is being gained by the part of the system, one part of the system, is actually just the heat that is being lost by the other component or part of the system. So in this case, uh, I just have to rewrite this one. The negative Q that is lost is equal to the Q that is actually gained. All right. Another thing is, uh, just to s uh, simplify later, I'm just going to write some of the quantities that we knew. The mass of your copper is uh, 6 kilograms. The mass of the ice is at 2 kilograms. And of course, the mass of the copper here did not change. It's still at 6 kilograms. However, class, one of the significant things that you have to understand af uh, on the final state is it's mentioned in the problem after thermal equilibrium so that means to say whatever the final temperature of the ice should be equal to the final temperature of your water component as well as the final temperature of your copper sorry t sub f final temperature of the copper and i'm hoping i don't have to explain that that is just equal to zero degree celsius all of the components, the ice, water, and copper, are in thermal equilibrium, and that is at the temperature 0 degrees Celsius. Okay, so once that is uh, already understood, we just have to further, um, you know, simplify the problem. Note that what is losing heat is your copper, and the component of the system that is gaining heat is your ice. Okay, and part of that ice is, as I've said, part of the heat that the ice gained is used to change its temperature from negative 20 to 0 degrees Celsius. So if you can remember, the Q there is just our familiar MC delta T. And also, part of those heat is actually gained by the ice to convert some part of it, just 0.80 of 20 kilograms, to liquid at zero degree celsius so you have q there which is latent heat and i'm hoping you remember that that is equal to some m l okay so we will deal with with this one we now have this one so that means to say that uh lost is by the copper so this will just be negative um mass of your copper specific heat of your copper the change of temperature of your copper and that is equal to remember that every all of the heat Q here initially by the copper is actually gained by the entire this one this portion over here is gained by the entire 2 kilogram ice to simply change its temperature from negative 20 to 0 degrees of the entire 2 kilogram so that's why in the Q gain the first term should be the mass of the ice i just have just i just have to note that is the entire two kilogram in that case uh the specific heat of ice which is different for water and the change of temperature of the ice but is that it no because if you go back here that the heat that is being lost by your copper is gained by the ice to accomplish this part here right so the two kilogram ice is gaining the heat from your copper to, to raise its temperature from negative 20 degrees celsius to zero degrees celsius but take note that in the problem what happened is actually the part of the two kilogram ice is further 
it's actually gaining or yeah, gaining additional heat to change part of the 2 kg ice to 0.80 water. So that is why part of the Q gain will still include the phase change. So this is the phase change component. I'm going to write it in green plus the mass of your water. This is now the latent heat and then the latent heat of fusion. Okay, it should be fusion because the phase change is from solid to or yeah, the reverse uh, I mean the reversal process of solid to liquid. So it's fusion. Otherwise, if it's uh, the reversible process of either liquid to gas or gas to liquid, then you use uh, vaporization, L sub V. So this is L sub F. So I'm hoping I have to stress this so much that this must be included here. Because that's for the phase change. And also the mass component of this one is not 2 kilogram but only 0 0.80 kilogram. Because out of the 2 kilogram ice, only this portion is actually converted or underwent a phase change from solid ice to liquid water at the same temperature zero degrees okay so once we have that one uh, it's now very easy we simply have to simplify this this is negative m of copper c of copper the final temp is zero degrees minus t uh, we have t right yeah ti is just t and this one will just be m sub i ci delta t of ice and the phase change component, mass of the water, latent heat of fusion. So if you notice class, if this negative here will be distributed over this, you'll get a positive positive value. Sorry. So you'll just have um, M C U C C U that that is just times positive T will be equal to I'm just I just have to copy this one to maybe some Save some time. Uh, copy that one. Oh, no, no. Paste. Uh, I'm going to paste also that one. And notice I just have to divide both sides by the coefficient of T. So you have M of C copper, specific heat of copper. So you do the same thing here. Specific heat of copper. So this will now be T, which is what we want. So the temperature T, which is the initial temperature of the copper, will simply be given by this expression over here. Just have to copy that one. All right. Now at this point, we simply have to substitute the values. The mass of the ice is 2 kilograms. So this is the entire block of ice that's going to gain the heat. So this portion here, it's going to gain the heat from the copper the entire two kilogram and the sea of ice if you check your powerpoint presentation is 2100 joules per kilogram that's celsius degree the change of the temperature of ice take note that you have from negative 20 degrees celsius and that should be converted to zero degree celsius so that delta t is just the final temp minus initial temp. The final temp is zero degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature of negative 20 degrees Celsius. So you got positive 20 Celsius degree. So this is positive 20 Celsius degree plus the mass of only the water. So out of that, as, as I've said again and again, out of the, the two kilogram ice that is going to gain the heat from the copper they upon gaining that heat the entire two kilogram ice changes its temperature from negative 20 to zero degrees but still it's still in solid phase ice now out of the two kilogram 0.80 of that will be converted to liquid or 0.80 kilogram will undergo phase change and that's why we have this term we have this term this term over here so the, the mass that you're, that you're going to use is only the mass that underwent phase change. So it's just 0.80 of the 2 kilogram. And then the latent heat of fusion, if you can check, it's actually 334 times 10 to the 3 joules per kilogram. 
It means to say if I have to convert uh, one kilogram of ice to water, I will need this much energy. Okay, so uh, everything will simply now be divided by the mass of your copper, which is 6 kilogram in the problem. Uh, the specific heat of copper, you can check sa constant table of values. That's just 390 joules per kilogram, that Celsius degree. Now, we have to check whether our units are making sense. Otherwise, if it's not making sense, we probably did some mistake. Now, at this part, a uh, kilogram would cancel out. Celsius degree would cancel out also. For the second term, kilogram will cancel out. Yeah, so I have joules and joules. Joules and joules. So they can be added up. So no problem with that one. So the entire uh, numerator will simply be in terms of joules. And the denominator is in terms of, okay, the kilogram would cancel out. So we have joules per Celsius degree. So we get degree Celsius afterwards, which is a valid unit for temperature. So when you try to plug in those values class, you should get um, 150.09 degree Celsius. So this should be the initial temperature of the copper. Okay, so basically this problem is very easy. You just have to deeply analyze what happened where is who gains the heat who lost the heat and whether there are phase changes and if there are phase changes i recommend you write it like this so that you will be guided by the amount of heat that is present because if there is a phase change it's not only the mc delta t part but the latent heat which is given by ml will also add up as heat in that case